Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. Critically harsh reviews with a touch of class. Go. And welcome back to the first annual Board Game Snobs podcast featuring myself, Jerry, and just me, because I am the host. Gobby's not with us this time. Gobby is actually feeling very ill today, and he's going to be sitting here quietly, not saying anything about anything. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, good. Very nice. So this is the... you get the, This is the dream come true for you. Just hear your own self talk. I'm just going to talk out loud. Talk, talk, talk. All the listeners have demanded. Talk, talk uh, Bob Ross style. Bob Ross style. Yeah, just nice and soft. Like a, with an afro. We're going to talk about this little game over here. Pretty little game. You know what? That would probably be appropriate because... Yeah, nice are, and soothing. We are going to be very soothing in our tone. But we are about to spread a lot of hate. Yes. Yes, because the game... Yeah, this uh, uh, Hold on. I'm not about to dive into the game. Oh, well, no usually you need for you to start usually this. Usually you want to. You want banter. I'm about usually to Usually you, you start. You we start. haven't even begun this hey, podcast. And why you are you so I'm angry? Not angry? You have lost the Bob Ross mojo. No, my friend. Bob was, would not. Bob is looking down right now from his painted sky, and he's not happy. He's thinking, I wish I could paint some a happy little smile on Jerry. We just made Jerry a happy little fella. He's so... Uh, that chair is so squeaky. And I do not know how to get it... Unsqueak this chair? Yes. It's all right. Don't move. I won't. <laughs> Don't move the rest of this podcast. I'm sitting here. I got a fact for you. Give it to me. <laughs> fun fact. Go ahead. <laughs> Aren't they always fun, too? Did you know... Why is Chicago named the Windy City? Because of... The- Intense wind that uh, I think the locals refer to as the hawk. Ha False. You have been misled, much like everyone else. Mm. This is super fun. Reader's Digest. I uh, saw this today. You, do you read Reader's Digest. Reader's Digest? If it's to be found, if you're looking for fun facts, <laughs> look no further than Reader's Digest. Let me say this. If, I got it off my grandma's cabinet. <laughs> if you find the Reader's Digest. Along with the laughter is the best medicine. The Reader's Digest should typically be within at least three feet of a commode. <laughs> that's the only reason you'll be reading the Reader's Digest. Go ahead and give me this fun fact. So far, it's been rather So unfun. when you hear someone mention the Windy City... Actually, and this could pertain to you because it's dealing with people full of hot air. Mm. Yeah, but so yeah, we're going that burn. way. Right. I went that way. Go ahead. You've come at me with vile and vim, vim and vigor, vim and vigor. Well, when the nickname came to be, the Windy City wasn't describing the weather, but the people. Nineteenth-century journalists first gave Chicago this designation when criticizing the city's elite as full of hot air. Hmm. That's why it's the Windy City. They said Chicago actually doesn't really have that much more wind than any any particular other cities. You could have fooled me. I did not know that. I have my whole life thought the Windy City was because it's supposed to be windy. I've never been to Chicago. I don't know. Yeah, if you want to look and actually look this up, you'll have to watch it on YouTube. Is uh, it in Reader's Digest? No, this is something I oh, saw on I'm YouTube. I'm not interested. Uh, as you well know, uh, the listeners don't know. So I'm about to bare my soul. One of the things oh. that very much frightens me, terribly so. You don't have to take your shirt off for that. Right, no, it's getting ready. Is I am terribly frightened of tornadoes. Yes. like Really? Yes, terribly frightened. It is like a long-standing thing. My father was. And so, connecting so, this, segueing this well, to hold Chicago. On. Hold I on. Have, stop. I have questions. Stop, stop. I have questions. questions you can't bare your soul. Questions after. Okay. Questions after. I hope I don't forget. Just implant it. That if you go onto YouTube and look up the Chicago storm warning signals, they have the creepiest tornado sirens ever. Just do yourself a favor, look them up. They're weird, weird sounding. It's like zombies are attacking the city. (laughs) So anyways, I just bring that up because as somebody who likes to be abreast of whether or not I can hear the tornado sirens go off in my hometown, which uh, I actually supported our local fire department in making sure that we got Tornado sirens that could be heard all around the city. So. Because our old ones weren't any good. And being afraid of tornadoes. Yes. I, too, 
am afraid of bad weather. The, okay, this is – I will bear my soul. Let me take my shirt off. There you go. My soul is bare in all its glory. My biggest fear is driving at night in stormy weather straight into a tornado I cannot see. Like what? Like it's a stealth tornado? Like you just have no clue that it's when going it's to happen? black outside, complete wind. wind. I don't. I, yes, I can feel the, the wind, wind, but I can't see where it's coming from. The most dangerous place for you to be during tornado is technically in a vehicle. Okay, but this is further into my questioning of you bearing your soul. Mm-hmm. So, is is do you fear bad weather that could possibly turn into a tornado, or is it seeing a funnel cloud itself, which I've never seen? No, I've been in three separate tornadoes. Not act, not actually in the vortex, but actually in where <laughs> like I've a twister? seen them. Did you have a belt looped around a pipe? Yeah, what, like, in the vortex, like Sharknado. <laughs> so that's my question. So you saw them? Yes. You saw the funnel cloud? Yes, I saw them touch down. And that's what scares you? Yes, to this Or day. do you also not like the bad weather surrounding tornadoes? I don't mind bad weather that not that much. It, that doesn't get me. It's just the, See, the I idea. I fear the bad of, weather because the bad weather can turn into a tornado. Plus, plus when I worked in, on the Amlets for, or a shark for a while, uh, for, for a while, we often responded to neighboring towns that had been affected by bad weather or something of that nature. And we went to it town that was hit by a tornado and it was kind of a rough thing it's just it's it's very interesting to watch i mean i would like to see a funnel cloud no, just wouldn't. because i i want to see it from a safe distance yeah. just to see it because i mean that's something i mean you see them on tv all the time yeah. twister had people out there chasing tornadoes thinking it was super cool it's not no no it leads to death and destruction and being in southern oklahoma and northern texas it's something that is yeah right it's thing. real Especially at night. Drive right into one, not even know Nobody's it. Nobody's ever done that. It'd be like Carrie Elways. That's it. Oh, yeah. He did die, didn't he? He was gone. In Twister. Poor fellow. He had all that technology. Still got caught up in one. Yeah. But Bill Paxton, though. And Laura Dern. Forever in our hearts. Not Laura Dern. No, it wasn't Laura Dern. <laughs> it's <laughs> a Laura chick that mad about me that was not Laura uh... Dern. Oh. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> oh no, oh no! Mad about you, lady. Yes, is a Holly something? I don't know. No, but I really liked her. Holly Hunt? No. Holly Hunt? No. No. Hunt. Helen Hunt. Helen Hunt. Helen Hunt. Yes, yes, we got there. Yes. Ah, <laughs> uh, we miss you, Helen Hunt. What happened to you? I think she retired. If you're listening, please. <laughs> Helen uh, Hunt. What if she's a board game enthusiast? She could be. If letter from Helen Hunt, we're gonna know about it. So, Helen Hunt, please email us at boardgamesnobs at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter, Amazon, uh, LinkedIn, Fortnite, and uh, what else are we on? <laughs> um, hold on. I'm flossing. Oh, no. No. Yes. No. <laughs> All right. Going on with two things here that we're going to segue into this, the board game section of things that are chaotic and frantic and, quite frankly, destructive and things that are just a cultural uh, experience. Gen 7. Oh. Okay. Gen 7. That was a hard merge. It was a hard merge. Hard merge. The sequel. Hard merge. Coming at you. The Gen 7, the recent Crossroad Games by, I believe it's Simon. Is it Simon or Plat Hat? Come on. Plat Hat. It's Plat Hat. Plat Hat. Okay. Super expensive. Yeah, so to give you some backstory on this, there's two backstories. One, Gobby texts me in the middle of the night, and I know any time that Gobby... Hey. Text me after 11 o'clock at night. He's been doing one of two things. Hey, he's, Jerry. He is drinking. Guess what? And he's on cool stuff. And he's about <laughs> to buy what? a game. I and, really want to buy this game. And thus, he wants me to split it with him. But my wife has cut up my credit cards. Yes. So, I reluctantly decided, hey, why not? This seems to be a very popular game. Let's go ahead and get it. A Gen- Crossroads game. A Crossroads game. Which we thought we might have liked because there was like a small part of Dead of Winter, the story part, we thought we liked. Dead of Winter was... Apparently we didn't remember correctly. No, we did not. So Gen 7, and I'll just give you... I'll just go into my Bob Ross mode here. Okay. Bob Ross mode here. Of explaining Gen, Gen 7. 7 by Plat Hat. Yes, by Plat Hat. Uh, essentially what you do is you spread out all these beautiful little boards on the table. You have these nice little dice with your little player boards. And then you roll those dice. And some of those dice are your colonist, and some of them are your robot, but one of them is your officer. And when you look at on these boards, you're trying to fix problems that are going around your little spaceship. 
And so you'll put out dice that meet the certain requirements to get the parts that you need to fix certain critical areas of your ship. But if you ever play your officer, then you have to draw from the crossroad deck and make a decision. It's kind of like some sort of small little short story that you'll read and then choose what option you're going to take. Uh, It is competitive in the sense that you are trying to outdo your friends, but in the same connection, you're working together. So let me just say this, and this is my soapbox. This is me taking off my perm as Bob Ross, and this this is coming straight out. Well, it's Jerry. If a game does not Under that Jerry curl comes Jerry. That was nice. There, a designer one time, well, one of the greatest designers ever, Martin Wallace, made made a comment that for a game to be solid, yes, you have one solid mechanism, and you build the game around it. You put all the trappings around it, but you get one main mechanism, one thing that is what the essence of the game, and then you tack a few things onto it. In Gen 7, the main mechanism of this game is this dice placement. And it's barely even a game. It is, I would compare it to uh, Sentient, which is a very light dice rolling, dice manipulation game. Whereas this is pretty much the same thing where you're just putting out dice. The thing that is tacked onto the game is the story element. And this is what gets me. There wasn't much game in Gen 7. There was, it really didn't feel like I was playing much of a board game. It was basically, I'm just shuffling things around until I get to read part of the story and make a decision. And quite frankly, a lot of that was not that engaging. No. Um, I'm a big fan of Robinson Crusoe. where you do, so. you do manage various items and things of that nature. And it's very similar in its design. But you also pick a card, pick up these cards, and you go on an adventure, and you make a decision, and you shuffle that card into the event deck, and later it comes out, and it's bad. To me, Gen 7 didn't have the story or the... There was no soul in Gen 7. It was very pretty, but the setup... Uh, pretty? What's yeah. pretty about it? It was like a bunch of different boards with... No, 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 no. I, I liked... I honestly did like the feel, the, 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 the aesthetics of it. Like, I did see what they were going for. Hmm. But, but, but two hmm. things here. Two things here. Okay. I will say this. You know what? You're a hard man to break in on sometimes. Because you talk consistently. Well, I'd like to get my point across before <laughs> but you start. It's so much. Well, you talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Wow. Oh, that shocks you? This is a do po- you Do you not know that you talk a lot? I know it's a podcast, but you do a lot of talking. I'm like, well, maybe he'll pause in a second. I can break in. You can, look, That hasn't happened the last seven minutes. <laughs> look. I'm trying to add some sustenance oh, to our podcast. And sustenance? Here's the thing. Or substance? Here's the thing. Iconology or iconography? What's the difference? The is di- there a difference? Let's find out. The difference is, is that the main mechanism of this podcast is giving mechanism. our <laughs> listeners some insight into board oh, games. Oh, really? And the trapping. You think that's it? Yes. <laughs> I don't think so. You don't think so? That's, they're tuned into the wrong podcast. Well, here. Well, what did you okay. think? Give me Hashtag a second. Team Jerry. What did Go. you think about Gen 7, Gobby? <clears throat> oh, this is what I thought about it. Go ahead. Gen 7 by designer Steve Nix. Nobody cares. You always say that. No, 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 no. Go ahead and keep no, going. No, that's like just your go-to line. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. When, whenever you mean I don't care, you just don't. say I don't care. There's somebody thinking. I wonder who the heck designed that game. And they've been thinking it for seven minutes, but nobody said nothing don't because Jerry just goes on and on and on care. about this game. <laughs> this is a game we watched. Oh, thirty minutes of Rodney explaining it. Excellent job, Rodney. Excellent job. He did great. But there's a thousand moving parts, all simply to set down dice and take your action, like you said, to get to the story part, which is very minimal. Uh, why am I going through all this crap when really I just want to know the, get to the story, like a choose your own event. Just make the game a choose your own adventure. Pretty much. Why deal with, oh, well, let's fix this engine and roll your dice. Oh, no. It was- uh, 
It, it, no. It was kind of like waiting 35 minutes of science, listening through 35 minutes of scientific talk just to watch Tom Hardy turn into Venom. Yes. It's like, well, just get to the point. Yes. Just get to the point. Uh, hey, did I tell you that? Uh, no, here's the thing. This is how much I- Wait, did I tell you that? No, you did not. Because I literally said that on my other podcast. I didn't. You didn't say that. The reason I say that is- All right. I'll backtrack a little bit. Wait, I don't like no, Marvel don't guys. Get me started on Venom. I don't like no. I don't like Marvel shows. I don't like TV shows in general. But Gobby loves superhero shows and oh, crappy yeah. movies. No, so when Gobby, I don't love crappy movies. I like quality movies. Gobby if watched, I love crappy movies, I like Venom. When Gobby calls and says, "Hey, I just watched this show," and it's, oh, that's right. So I, I called you. I stop and I go and watch reviews and try to catch up on the shows. So I'll have something to talk about, and so I have never watched Venom. But the nor should you. The overall thing of the movie is that it takes a long time to get the show going, and it's kind of cheesy. Thirty five minutes. That's kind of what Gen Seven is to me. It takes yes. a long time to get going. There's not much there, and it's kind of cheesy. Yes. For oh, for eighty five dollars plus shipping. Yeah, it's not. It's not an eighty five dollar game. No, it's not. No, I don't know why that game is eighty five dollars. I think the story writing in it near and far. Near and far, a superior game to Gen 7 for just about the same amount of... Wow, are you going to go... Wait a minute. Why didn't I think of that? Give me a second. Do I like Near and Far more than I gen- do Gen 7? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What? Well, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go, yeah, that's a good If one. you want storytelling, go Near and Far. Yeah, it is. But it's not Crossroads. It's not like you're making no, a deep settling decision. No, I, I, I Okay, and this is the deal. Much like Venom... I was 35 minutes into it. I'm like, I'm about to check out. Thankfully, right at that mark, he turns into Venom. The rest of the story was blah. It was okay. It, Tom Hardy. I love Tom, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy held my interest with his weird acting and accent in that movie. I love Tom Hardy. Gen 7, it took forever to set up. It doesn't have Tom Hardy. It took forever to learn it. All to throw out a card, roll some dice, place them. For this, I'm like, oh, where's the st- where am I getting to? What's the point? My, I was done. My I was war- done. My warning of this game would be that if you are a diehard Dead of Winter fan and you're looking for Dead of Winter in space, then that might be what this game appeals to. So you might check into it. But quite frankly, I'm not a big Dead of, Dead of Winter fan. I didn't. Frankly, my dear, I really think that probably Dead of Winter is a superior game. And you should probably stick to that. But if you want to try something, then Gen 7. For the rest of you out there, listeners, please try before you buy. As a matter of fact, I would avoid mm. this one outright. It was a big disappointment in my book. Always bo- try before you buy, Jerry. No. Sometimes you just buy. Don't make a rookie mistake and just buy stuff. The, look who's talking. Two. That was a good Was that John Tavolta? That was look the baby's talking voice? now. Bruce Willis. Was it? Yes. John Travolta was oh. the dad. You know how many times we've had this conversation? I know, but I just can't ever get straight in my I mind. I think it's Bruce Willis that's the baby. Think so? Nobody wants to hear baby go, oh, John Travolta. Oh. That's your work. You're, you're Christopher Walken and your John Travolta is <laughs> the same. John. No, no. I put my pants on. No. One leg at a time. We, we've had actual requests. Walk out, Bell. Saying, don't do voices. Well, whatever. The listeners have wrote in. No, I've got a listener that is loves my voice. Who? Name her. My pseudonym. <laughs> Under my pseudonym. Under your pseudonym. Gen 7, a hard pass for the snobs. You know what I've noticed? What? <laughs> it's been a while. It's, it's, it's been a while since we've had a game we like a lot. Uh, I was thinking that the other day. All of 2018 has been kind of a, not a drag. Mm. But nothing's really wrecked your mind, you know? No. No. Uh, We're in 2019 now. 2019. We're coming at you from the future. Our last several discussions have been games we don't really care for. Do you think that mediocrity has set into the board gaming? Mediocrity or mediocrity? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is it both? I think that one heard is it both. both. Ways? It's both ways. Either mediocrity? One. Mediocrity. I've never heard of mediocr- mediocrity. I like an alacrity at, least at which you are what? going after my grammar. <laughs> what? Uh, what? The what? The alacrity. A- alacrity? A- C- Did I pronounce that right? 
I don't know. I don't know what you, I've never heard that term. You never heard of alacrity? Never heard of it. Well, I'm plus five there. Let me look up mediocrity while you talk. I think that in the board gaming community, we are going out of a phase for which we are trying new things. And so we have games like Chronicles of Crime, which uses an app primarily. And then you have these other games that are trying out different other types of twists on mechanics and and just different forms of, of trying to make the games new. And some of them are failing. And then we have the good old fashioned... Uh, basically redos everybody's remaking the same game over and over again and so we're we're in a tough spot right now everything that we played last year either we didn't really care for it all that much or it was a expansion or part two or something Uh, well and i think it's just like the movies just like the movies but i think it's fair to say is that we and i looked up mediocrity yeah and it says did you mean mediocrity mediocrity yeah i don't think mediocrity is a word it might not be just FYI. Well, I'm going to use it because I like to use it. Why? It does not exist. But by You're saying a word that does not exist. But how can I say something that doesn't exist? I thought I could just say flark snark. That's a, What's that mean? That's, Nothing. No. It means the exact same thing but as the, mediocrity. But the thing is, <laughs> flark if, snark. If you start using it, there's been a whole bunch of flark snark games this year. There has been. <laughs> And to tell you the truth, the Flark Snark games, which everybody knows are games that are just remixes of old games, oh. have not been very impressive. I think that every year we add about two or three games to our collection that we really like. I, 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 we, I, we were going to do a podcast of 2018 games, but I can't think of any enough to make it worth a podcast. Uh, yeah, I can. And I, I'm going to send you a list. I haven't worked on it very much. Okay. But there is, but we're there. Anyways, Gen 7 is a hard pass. And so let's move on since we got the ha- get out your hater raid. Done. Hold on. Hater raid. Here's my hater raid. That's cheap bourbon. It is not. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> I like that Black <laughs> Eagle stuff that you had. This is uh, like 114 or something. Never heard of it. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Another game for which we played that I was... This game hurts me worse than Gen 7 because I really wanted to like this game. I really wanted to like Gen 7 because I love sci-fi. I love space. I love the idea of a generational ship in space and things. Yeah. yeah. Well, this next game... We didn't even... This next game was one that I've been looking forward to for quite some time. And unfortunately, it was... Sold to me as the meanest bidding game out there, the Estates. And so, just to give you some background on the Estates, it was a Kickstarter game. It's got some pretty interesting components to it. By Klaus Zock. Yes. Who makes it? Uh, Capstone Games. Really? Or Simply Complex. Nice. I don't know what that means. These are all information that I'll use. Artist Dan Van Paraden. Dan Van Paraden? Fidges Van Pariden. Pariden? Pardon? Apparently, this is a. I don't from care. From another country. I don't care. Of which I am not familiar, and I cannot say their names, and okay. I apologize. Why do you not care what about, about the, so many things? It's because. What do you care about? What do I care about? What, would I, what could I say that you say, thank you? I care. I care about your informed opinion, which you have about so what? few of them. Well, then why am I on here? Well, you're the trappings of all of them. You're what makes the show palatable. I'm the yams to your turkey and dressing. Yes. Yes. So like. Cranberry sauce. Yes. That's exactly it. I'm the turkey here. But nobody just wants to eat turkey because it's dry. It's dry and there's sustenance to it. But nobody just wants to sit around. Sustenance. Sustenance. Whatever. Hold on. I got to look that up now. Go ahead. You're the cranberry sauce to my giblets. The estates. Another flock norm. (laughs) Flock norm. Uh, the estate. So let me describe the estates to you. Essentially, you have a bunch of cubes, big cubes, big chunky cubes that are numbered Hold. in different colors. Sustenance. Food and drink regarded as a source of strength, nourishment. You are nourishment to me. And this podcast. You're the heart and soul of this podcast. I'm hashtag Team Gobby. <laughs> I'm hashtag Team Jerry. What? I got it tattooed. Really? Right in the small of my back. That's no, no. Yes, no. It's there. Uh, you don't have a small up your back. Oh, <laughs> uh, what? What? So, as the estates, the estates by Klaus. 
So listen here, Klaus. Claus. As you're going through Klaus the game. Klaus You Zuck. take the time to select one of these colored cubes that have a number on them, and that is your building. And basically, mm-hmm. you put it up for auction, and you do a once-around bid starting with the player that left. They say, put their number out there, and when whoever gets around to the, when, once it goes around the table and gets back to the auctioneer, the auctioneer has the option of either giving, paying for the block, to the highest bidder, they bid ten million. Then the, the auctioneer is going to pay that player ten ten million and keep the block. You have twelve million total to start off with. Yeah, which is a finite amount of money. Uh, or taking the highest bidder's money and giving him the block. You take the block, you put it out on the map, and if it's a blue of five color block, then it's worth five victory points. The strategy of the game comes from is that every time you place another block on top of another block, that color then owns it. And so whoever wins these uh, wins these uh, auctions, they take control of those colored blocks. So if I'm scoring all the blue blocks because I've got the license to... You blue might, blockers. Yeah, you might be scoring you all those? the... those? Yes, yes. <laughs> might be scoring all the red blocks. Block out them Blu-rays. So there you go. No, way. Blu-rays are a DVD. There. What are they supposed to block out? I don't know. What are blue blockers blocking? I don't really know. How much Why blue, are they blocking blue? How much blue would the blue block block? The blue block would block blue. I don't know. <laughs> they blocked out something. They did. I can't Powerful. recall. Powerful. UV rays. Oh, that's right. They did the UV yes, rays. Yes, blue blockers. Those were nice. That's like literally something most people have no idea about. Well, they can Google it. Much like if they want to know the name of these designers or artists of these board games, they could probably Google <sighs> that too. And much like that, they probably don't care. Klaus. The Zuck. estates states was just not that good of a bidding game okay yeah, let gonna, me break in here break it in break it down uh we borrowed this from mike thank you mike recently of bgs me and jerry played a two game a two-player game of the estates of a bidding game mind you so of it, a bidding game it, and it says two to five players and that's what i said to jerry i said it's a two-player bidding game option it can work Okay, so we played it. Um, I kept making horrendous mistakes. Handing Jerry all these good plots of land. He owned most of the, uh, whatever they're called, tower yeah. contracts. Yeah, the I don't condos. Know what I call them condos. I ended up winning the game. Yep, at the last minute. <laughs> at the last minute. Because of the scoring system, you get negative points if you don't complete these rows. And it was kind of a back and forth at two players. And I was up in the air. I was like, huh, well, that's interesting. I mean, I don't care for a game personally where I know I made terrible. Like, literally, I messed up almost every auction I did. Because I either went for a roof that would complete only Jerry's buildings which was wise. <laughs> which I'm like, okay. And then I, I just did terrible. And I ended up winning. I was like, but that was interesting because there was a push, a push, push pull between two people. We broke it out with four players. And it got atrocious. Poor Enrique. It got atrocious. Poor Enri- so it was so utterly random. And they're in a four player game, there are points when either A, you have no money, so you can't do anything, or B, there's auctions that you have zero there, – there's no reason for you to be interested in that auction. It was also the thing that I did not like is that at the beginning of the game, the first person who wins the first blue block now scores those blue blocks at the end of the game. That's right. The first person who scores the red block and so forth. For some reason, Enrique – Completely forgot that. Didn't bid the first few rounds and then couldn't score any blocks. And so Enrique spent the entire game trying to drive everybody into negative points, which is about near impossible. Uh, he could literally score no points. Yes, he could literally score no points. He could only send but us into could, negative. He could have won the game, possibly. Yes. But I don't I don't know. I don't know if that's even possible. I guess it was perfect storm type it's thing. It's so... I, this It was a game that I so wanted to love. But in terms of a bidding game, and I'll sum it and up And we here, love bidding. I love Modern that Art. That may be our second favorite behind Worker Placement. I love uh, Or mine, society. at least. I will say this. if Maybe Jerry's number one. When I got to, through playing the Estates, I got to thinking of which game would be a 
manage your money bidding game with some area control because that's basically what this is. And I thought, playing the estates, this is going to sound sad. It made me want to bust out Power Grid. Oh, yeah. A long, drawn-out old game. But quite frankly, there's bidding in it, and it's a neat bidding. It's it's a title. Oh, no, Power Grid's solid. There's pretty solid resource management. There's the, the area control is not that great, but it's there. You're managing your money. I, it, the estates made me want to play a long game of Power I mean, Grid. I would rather play anything than the estates because, okay, if Jerry is has the contracts for purple, there's no reason for me to bid on purple. It 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 was a weird. It was. I mean, weird. I could I could bid on purple and then hope to place it in a plot of land where he might score minimal points, but it, it was just that, that was terrible. I didn't like that. It, it certainly was not the it was not the game I wanted, and so unfortunately, it is. It's it's not it's not the estate I was looking for. And so that was very disappointing. Now to close this out, we're, we're, we've been doing a lot of we've been throwing a lot of shade here. Gen Seven was kind of a disappointment. Yes, uh, this game is a reprint, and one that I wanted to play for a long time. Came back in print, Arboretum. I love Arboretum. Absolutely love Arboretum. It's uh, a good game. It is a good game. And I here's the th- the only thing I would warn people about is that I like it better two player. I like it better with less players. Mainly because I like the fact that I can look at what you're doing and be able to affect it. Arboretum is a bunch of cards with a bunch of trees, like six to different By six Dan th- Kasser. Thank you, Dan. Uh, I do. Uh, yeah. And Philosonia Editions, Renegade Game Studio, Z-Man Games, plus three more. Apparently, it's been published by a lot of people. It's been published and been out of print for a while. It just came back. Renegade's the latest. This is what gets me. Arboretum. We played a two-player games with their six different types of trees, different colors of trees, and then the cards are numbered one through eight. What you're trying to do is to build an Arboretum. You draw two cards, either from your discard pile, your opponent's discard pile, or the top of the draw pile. You play one card, and you discard one. You play the card down in front of you to create your Arboretum. And the scoring of the game is what makes the game. So each round, when it gets time to score the plants or or the trees, the cards that you have left in your hand, you'll have seven cards left in your hand. Whoever has the highest total of those cards gets the right to score that plant. So it's... Tree. This tree. It's back and forth because you want to play your higher cards, but at the same time, you want to hold on to them so you'll have the right to score the card. So there is some like card counting going on, watching what your opponent's doing. And I can hold on to a high-level card that will mess you up and keep you from scoring one of your plots there, one of your plots of uh, trees. The scoring is very interesting because you'll start from the lowest. No, you can start. Uh, you, you score the cards orthogonally, starting at one, two, three. You, you go into ascending order. One to eight. One to eight. There is this little rule in the book that changes everything. Say I'm planting all the blue trees, and I have my nice run of blue trees. Gobby sees that I'm planting all these trees, and I'm scoring the points, so he is going to hold on to the eight blue card. Holds on to the entirety of the game. When we go down to lay down our cards to see who gets to score those trees, if I have the one, it trumps the eight. It negates it. If I had played the one out here, out into my Arboretum, then the eight stands. That little simple rule of not knowing if your opponent is holding on to the one while you're holding on to an eight is a viable tactic, and it's something that changes the game. It is a very smart rule. And Arboretum is not only beautiful, it is... It, it is probably it is. I've I've thought about this here recently. I think that is probably my one of my favorite two player games. I think I would rather play Arboretum over Hana Kanoji. I think it's like right up there. Hana Kanoji, Hama Kanoji. What's it called? Go ahead, fix it. Fix Hana it. Makoji. Hana Makoji. It's right up there with it. Right up um, there with it. I prefer Arboretum. I do too. Hana Makoji is an excellent game. Specifically for a two-player. Arboretum is a good game. We played it three-player and two-player, and we do like the two-player aspect because I can keep track of what you're doing more. You can keep track of me. The only thing I will say about the eight versus the one, that is a neat rule. It's a little twist, and it keeps everybody in check. However, 
I don't think it literally came into any play no, it has, in the games yeah, that we had. I like that Not it's the there. It, yes. I like that it's there. I like that it's there. <clears throat> but there's two twists to the game. That, the one can trump your eight. Mm-hmm. So, if you're holding on just to the eight, you better hold on to something else just in case. Yep. So, that's the mind. That's the back and forth. The, oh, was the what are they going to play? The second one is simply the fact that you can lay down all the cards in the world, but you have to hold on to that type of tree into yeah. your hand to score it. And that sometimes is hard to remember. It's hard. Because I played several trees. I'm like, that was the last of that tree. And I'm just worried about running and getting me a big run of that tree. But I have nothing to score now. So then you're just drawing cards, hoping you draw that another count of that tree in your and hand. And that is exciting because it has it's that good. feeling of push your luck. It's good. So this is this is my saying here. This is what I'm getting at. This is Bob Ross here. And you know how Bob Ross likes trees? Yes. Likes painting those little painting trees, those trees. Making those trees come out of those brushes. Oh, look at here. That's a beautiful little mistake. It's a happy little mistake. Happy little mistake. Gen 7. That was not a happy little mistake. No, that was, a, that was a waste mistake. of time. Horrible mistake. Uh, the estates, it just wasn't quite there. Hey. Hey. You know what? What? I literally watched the Shut Up and Sit Down review of Arboretum. Yeah. And they made an ASMR reference. They did? Yes. So they're weird like us. They are aware of ASMR. Really? Yes. That's what he used in his review. Hmm. He started off the review doing ASMR. Quinn? No. Matt? Matt. Matt. I like Matt. It's good. It's He's a good, good review. I hate that Paul left. Makes me sad. He's like, oh, I mean, I liked Paul. I like Paul, too. I didn't like his taste in games. No, a little I bit really different. I really don't agree with Shep and sit down with a lot of their games. That no, like. but I love their videos. I love their, their videos. Reviews. Their videos. Not the reviews necessarily, because like we said, they don't agree about it. If we had time, energy, motivation. Money. Camera. We might be the American shit up and sit down. We could try. But we're not going to be. All we need is a four hundred dollar camera. So we want to set up a no. Kickstarter. We're not camera people. PayPal us. You have Patreon. The, I might have the face for cameras, a, but you <laughs> you have the voice for radio, my friend. And so we'll just keep it <laughs> the like face it is. for radio. Yes, that's what you mean to say. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. How uh, dare you? Spend your 50- you're calling me ugly right now. No, I'm not calling you. Ugly. You you're, just you're said a it. Beautiful man. You said I, have the face I agreed for radio. with what you said. You said I I, I agree with your self flagellating <laughs> comment. <laughs> Self flagellation? I don't know if that's a word. Self deprecating? The flagellation? Flagellation? Flagellation. Let's look that up. Look it up. I'm not going to. I've you looked up enough should, words. You should probably look that up because we might have to cut that. Self flat flatul I'm sure it's something related to flatulence. F E F L E G. Flat U lading. F L E F E F L E G A. Look it up right. F L E G A? That's flagger. You don't know nothing. What are you doing flatulating? You, you don't know nothing. I'm Flat just saying. Flatulating. No, there's no flatulate. Spin, spin your 50. Oh, wait. Flatulation. Flatulence. Oh, that takes you to flatulence. What is the meaning of flatulate? Verb. Third person singular simple. Pre- <laughs> That's not a word. I don't think it's a word. Maybe I, it is. I just I think I made up a word, and uh, it's fine. Maybe it is a word. It's fine. Dealing with flatulence, it's but you, not self flatulating. How would you? <laughs> how would you not? I mean, I guess you just release gas. There you go. That's self flatulating. Trees release release gas. They do, and they provide in the form us oxygen. of oxygen. Spend, we appreciate spend fifteen dollars and get arboretum. You won't regret we appreciate it. Appreciate that trees. Spend fifteen dollars and get arboretum. It is probably one of the better games. I'd rather play a card game. Yeah. Little low card game where you're just making a little trail. Happy little trail. Happy little trees. Looking at some trees. That's all for us today. But I had so much more. Uh, we're going to have another podcast here. because I, I had so much more to discuss. About trees? No. Mission Impossible. I'm ready to make like a tree and leave. So Get out of here, McFly. All right. All right. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We've already said all Tumblr, that. Tumblr, and we love y'all. Keep sending us emails. We yeah. do love you. That's all for us for tonight. Bye. Good day. Thank you for listening to the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy. Stay classy.